Les velours riches en densité sont utilisés comme tapis et couvrent tabouret en présence du roi ou chef coutumier lors de grandes occasions. Et les velours moins élaborés sont utilisés dans la maison pour agrémenter la vie de tous les jours. Les jupes en tissu raffia, elles, étaient portées par les hommes lors d'initiations, funérailles et cérémonies festives. Ligne directrice lors d'initiations masculines, il illustre le cycle de la vie et de la mort que les initiés reconstituent lors de leur voyage vers la virilité, lors de leur expérience dans la forêt, pendant plusieurs jours, pour, pendant leur initiation et à leur retour pour célébrer cette nouvelle naissance symbolique. Ils célébreront par une première danse en tant que nouvel homme en arborant ce somptueux tissu de raffia en forme de jupe. Les femmes, elles aussi, portent ce tissu lors de cérémonies. En règle générale, dans la culture Congo, la transition de la vie à la mort a été soutenue par l'expression des arts tissés. Utilisé pour envelopper les morts, tapisser les cercueils, préparant ainsi le défunt vers le voyage vers l'au-delà. Aussi donné à une personne en pleine ascension sociale, le raffia est une puissante expression d'un statut social élevé, un véhicule pour communiquer à l'autre le pouvoir et le prestige d'une personne pour faire connaître le rang social au sein d'une hiérarchie politique ou autre. Il indique qui est le roi, le chef coutumier et consort. La toile de raffia était aussi utilisée autrefois comme monnaie d'échange. Pour le velours kassai, ce sont les, des formes géométriques qui composent une uniformité, une élégance structurée qui appelle à l'attention et éveille à la curiosité et place les créations au rang d'œuvres d'art. On peut y ajouter également d'autres éléments de décoration tels que des perles ou corilles. Trois éléments sont explorés lors de ces créations. Les textures, les couleurs, le blanc, beige, marron, rouge et noir. Les formes, triangle, losange, rectangle. Chacune de ces représentations a une symbolique forte et bien spécifique, mais l'on retiendra surtout l'idée du contraste couleur claire et sombre qui à elle seule définit une signification sacrée. C'est ainsi que l'on retrouve ces imprimés sur beaucoup de textiles qui font notre quotidien ici en Occident, à commencer par les maisons de couture telles que Fendi, Balmain, Givenchy et j'en passe. Toutes se sont inspirées de ces formes qui, à l'origine, sont bien plus que de simples formes géométriques. Et pour en apprendre davantage sur le sujet passionnant de nos textiles et leurs histoires, je vous propose de découvrir le livre « Élégance africaine, tissus traditionnels et mode contemporaine » de René Mendy Angundou. Un bel ouvrage qui complète cette vidéo sur nos textiles et leurs impacts dans le monde de la mode contemporaine. Toujours dans la mode, cette fois du côté de la création vêtements haute couture et prêt à porter de luxe, voyons comment les balbutiements d'une un, renaissance africaine voient le jour. C'est tout un secteur en pleine ébullition pour les premiers pas de l'Afrique subsaharienne, Kama, dans ce cercle très fermé qui est la haute couture. L'air et les codes changent. La terre mer a le vent en poupe. La maison Chanel, qui n'est jamais en reste, et même bien souvent précurseuse à bien des égards, l'a encore une fois très bien compris. Elle a cette fois de plus flairé ce parfum de renaissance d'une Afrique nouvelle sur le point de renaître de ses cendres. Première à donner le ton pour ce genre d'événement en Afrique noire, 
plus précisément du côté du Sénégal où nos jeunes créateurs et créatrices bien confirmés font la fierté du continent à l'international. Coup de projecteur sur les artistes et leurs œuvres qui expriment la quintessence de la terre-mère. Ces coups de projecteur sont le tremplin de beaucoup de jeunes artistes et d'autres déjà bien confirmés pour donner un nouveau souffle et un bel élan au marché de la mode haut de gamme sur notre continent et à l'international. C'est ici l'extrait d'un reportage qui vous en dit encore plus sur le sujet. Tous les cas. Chanel is coming to Dakar and that's a sign that we are out there and actually we don't even have to go to them, they're coming to us. Being in it, being in, like submerged in the culture, the energy is just different, bro. Moi j'ai l'habitude de dire que les Africains sont nés déjà avec la joie de vivre et ils ont l'art aussi dans le sang. Donc ça nous tombe du ciel. Senegalese culture is all about celebration. I mean we celebrate everything and anything. Senegal is not like the biggest economy country in, in Africa, but is one of the most attractive country fashion-wise. There's very rarely that notion of being overdressed. When you present yourself to a celebration or wherever, it's really meaningful for people to be dressed and dressed well. My name is Celia Rabikan. I'm a fashion designer and filmmaker. I'm from Dakar. I wanted to be a fashion designer since I was a little kid. That's the only word that I knew. Being a designer is what I wanted to do. Opening the shop in Dakar, I think it was late 2017, and it was, uh, it was amazing. I wanted that black and white thing happening. I commissioned one of my artist friends to just write some like automatic thoughts and uh, the space he was in at the time. Every Senegalese woman you meet is a fashion designer. We, we buy clothes, but most of the time we actually get our clothes made and everyone goes to the tailor at the corner of the street and it's the culture of how things are made. That's how I learn about fashion. My name is Diara Busso and I am the founder of Diara Blue. I see art in numbers and shapes and patterns and Diara Blue was the place where I could merge those interests and create something tangible. The background is in mathematics. I never studied fashion or art. It's kind of something that's just always had in my heart. I am not um, a traditional designer. I don't even know the rules, so I break them all the time. And I think that's what makes my work special. I happen to... Oh, sorry. I knew I'm a designer, I can only think for like two seconds. My name is Mimi Plonge, and I'm a fashion designer, and I'm here in Gore Island for the 20th anniversary of Adama Paris Dakar Fashion Week. I think that I'm learning a lot more about, you know, the traditions of Senegalese fashion, which I didn't know the specifics of, you know, certain things that they were into as a culture. Um, I think the women tend to love a lot of color. The leather work in Senegal is like crazy. They do amazing bags and, and that's what, you know, we do too. So I see a lot of similarities there. I am Adama Paris. I'm a fashion designer from Senegal and I'm also the founder and the producer of Dakar Fashion Week. When it was 20 years ago, And uh, yes, I was a young girl and I had this dream of bringing together and giving a platform to young African designer. My aim was to bring and to show African fashion to the world. So my name is Adebayo Okelawa and I'm the creative director of Orange Culture Nigeria. I'm looking forward to seeing all the designers, I guess, showing, just seeing like people from Ghana, from South Africa, seeing their work, and also just the united spirit of all of us just being here together, working together, celebrating together. I think that that's just so beautiful. Adama has created something so unique and given people so much hope and dreams. Like, if you're a model, Fashion Week is where you start to feel like you're credible. If you're a makeup artist, Fashion Week is where you start. And having that place to go to and like not only meet other like-minded individuals, but feel celebrated and feel valid, and a lot of press comes to that, is something really, really important for us. My name is Pharrell Williams. I've had the honor and the privilege to be invited to the Chanel show here in Dakar in this beautiful continent called Africa. This building was the ancient Palais uh, de Justice. That's my English accent for um, French wording. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's my distinct honor and pleasure to be here. My name is Malik Boudian. Um, I'm a model and photographer, and I'm from Senegal. I've been 
doing some documentary and fashion photographs for Chanel. As a model, when I travel sometimes with show, I barely see this kind of relationship, which I found very, very interesting for, for the country. I think this show is not only for Senegal, it's also for Africa, you know, it's, it's a very, good thing, you know, it's going to give so much hope to so many designers that always dreamed this and that never thought it would be possible. Uh, what I was interested in when reading the book was that they are starting a collaboration with an internship residency type program uh, with their 19M. So it's not just a show, it's like a long-term partnership and collaboration in the creative space. And I think more of that would be really beautiful because the stories we have to tell are already here. Uh, there were as well a few people that were worried that didn't understand why Chanel was coming or the night step com is coming, what conversation was going to happen, how is the dynamic. And uh, I also know people that chose not to go to the show, not to collaborate. So that, that as well exists. My position is that it's something that is good for the creatives and for the business of the creatives. And as long as the, the collaboration is horizontal, I don't see why the car cannot collaborate with any other city of the world. I'm giving you long answers, right? Is it? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, Speak a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm wearing here is an interpretation of a jellaba. It's a masculine piece. Usually it's worn for prayer. Yeah, I just wanted to take that shape and it was really, this was made for me. I think what makes me proud to be an African designer is really just having the ability to shape my own narrative. I think for many years, we've always been told who we are and how we're supposed to present ourselves. But being able to present myself and choose how my narrative is sort of exported to the world. I feel like it's such a privilege and I'm thankful for that. This is one of my favorite prints called Tuki Noir. And Tuki means to travel in Senegal or to voyage. The idea of traveling for campaigns around the world and showing our own Africa in different places. I call it African voyage. Um, and this was just celebrating random paths that we take to get there. Again, using math and, and geometry uh, to create it. So. Less way because it's the. There are people who live upstairs and I think they are cooking. Okay, so we cool. just have to give them like five minutes. <laughs> so, fashion and creativity is at the heart of how Senegalese women celebrate themselves every single day. It's like a form of self love. I would say it's our sixth love language. This is the steaming room. <laughs> and this is the workshop. Salam alaikum. Ça va? I want them to feel free. I want people to feel free when they wear the Arab blue. I want them to feel happy. It's like the happy clothes, the prints, the memories. Um, and that's, that's what I want. It's like I create this beautiful thing with so many different parts of my identities and experiences. And to see people wear it around the world as they travel and celebrate meaningful moments, it's just, it means so much to me. Story is just like part of our story, a part of our black story. And we share that with lots of black people in the world. And I think that uh, 20 years of celebrating fashion and expression of art, um, we needed to kind of wipe that sore and difficult past and, and just to put joy and color and beauty and to bring back, uh, it's kind of a, to us to just own back what they took from us. Gore Island was like a port for, you know, a lot of slavery in the past. And I think that, you know, being able to be here and celebrate excellence in so many ways and being here to celebrate all of the different voices that have been able to come through all the adversity and still shine and still create with very little. For me, it just, it shows like the trajectory and the growth and the opportunity and everything that lies within this continent. So I can say that Gore is an island that has something particular. For example, the world entire comes to this place. So it also allows us to communicate with the world entire and on place and to share our history. I had a conversation with Carl uh, years ago when he was alive about bringing um, the house to Africa for the first time. And so like it was this group effort, but it was a dream of mine to be somewhere here. And I, I'm so glad that they chose Senegal because, you know, the history of how it was once occupied by the Portuguese, by the Dutch and by, you know, France, obviously. Um, I thought it was incredibly poetic and symbolic that the, the a French Maison decided to come back here and not just like with opportunity of equality, but actually something better like equity to really work with the people here because the soil is rich, the culture is rich, and the history is rich. To me, 
creating is, is just an extension of my life. I was lucky enough to have my parents that were diplomats. So from young age, I traveled the world with them. And I always like, I saw a big designer fashion show and I was mom, I want to do that. She was like, oh, you want to be a model because you're skinny? I was like, no. The end goal was always to own our ecosystems and to own our story and to, to just do us by us for the world. The Western validation question is something that is uh, not relevant for my generation. And it's something that we don't really care about because it's just not natural to have so much focus on how you are seen, how you are perceived, and trying to debunk those stereotypes all the time. It's a huge loss of energy. And it's a huge loss of just time. That time can be invested into working on what we are trying to achieve, how we are trying to excavate some tools from our own Senegalese African archive to just build the future that we're, we envision. There's an obsession for the city, there's an obsession for Senegal's immaterial heritage, and there's an obsession for worlds we cannot see, for the invisible, for the mystical, for initiatory journeys. I'm very much gravitating around those three poles. I wouldn't see why anyone would not, um, as a luxury brand, want to come to Africa because it's the youngest continent that's, you know, that's here. And Dakar itself, being French-speaking, um, there's a background connection to, you know, France. It makes sense. Their presence here is going to definitely um, bring awareness of what is happening here. Um, I'm looking forward to more relationships, more collaborations, and I'm hoping that Chanel will find time to work with a lot of us here as well. So yeah, so if anything, maybe that. <laughs> if you truly believe in something and you truly care about it, uh, then you can do it. And especially being African, being black, being Muslim, I mean, I have every single title that makes me a failure by default in society. If I look at how we are categorized, yet I'm gonna make it. And I think that's the legacy I wanna make, that those, those titles don't really stop you, but those different facets of your identity can really enrich whatever you make out of it. But it's still true to me. A proud Senegalese woman who grew up here in Dakar and who lives in Silicon Valley, who can use math and algorithms to create clothes made by artisans here that are sold around the world. Like, it's a story that just makes no sense at all when you put it together, but it actually does. And, and that's the kind of stories I want to tell. One day I watched a movie, and uh, it's about this, this young writer, and he was like, I'm gonna go travel to this country to, to make great books. And, and, and I remember his father telling him, why are you going away? You have so much stories here, you know? And I think for a lot of young designers and artists, it's confirmation that they, they don't need to travel so far to make beautiful things and inspire things. I'm, I'm trying to leave not only a legacy, I'm trying to teach this young generation because, you know, when I started, I was a young girl with a, with a dream. I, I just want people to believe in African dreams. It's just like, it is our time and it's been our time for a long time. I think that once it grows here, I think that then it needs to move overseas and start becoming like more global and bringing other people into our stories because it shouldn't just be for us, it should be for the world. And I do hope that it does inspire people to realize that we are enough again. Um, but I think the long-term solution really is training and it's, it's opportunities for those people to feel like they can earn a living wage uh, being an artisan, that they can be celebrated, it can be valid. One of the most powerful resources that the continent of Africa has is untapped potential. In West Africa, in Senegal, most talented people, they all left. Since I, I've been in Europe, I always dream to to come back and, you know, do something here and work here. And it gives me a lot, a lot of hope and a confirmation of the hope that I have of there's a future here that we can build, like especially as the young people, instead of always seeing hope somewhere else. We know what what's happened before, but what we want is to write our story. It can be beautiful, it can be dramatic, it can be anything. We just embrace the journey. Merci beaucoup.
ça laisse en vue de belles perspectives, n'est-ce pas J'espère que ce sujet vous a plu et si c'est le cas, n'hésitez surtout pas à le montrer en likant et en vous abonnant. Et pour ceux qui reviennent, merci de votre fidélité. C'était Mumba pour Ask Spirituality Congo Kachopa. Je vous dis à très bientôt pour une nouvelle vidéo. Tolingana, to sangana, ingeta. Tolingana, to sangana. Butu iso sila muizukuta. Mohindo tangu efweni. Mohindo tangu efweni.